Today's topic is Let the Guru Be Your Guide. We'll start with a song by Swamiji and then an excerpt from a talk by Swamiji on this topic. Welcome again. Walk like a man Even though you walk alone Why go to prove Once the road is known Let come who will But if they all turn home The goal still awaits you Go on alone unknown life's but a shadow once our dreams have flown what if men cry your dream is not our own your soul knows the answer go on alone life your heart bless everything that's grown fear not the loving all this world's your own make rich the soil but once the seed is sown seek freedom don't linger go a man even though you walk alone I caught approval once the road is known let come who will but if they all turn home the goal still awaits you go My first words when I met Master were, I want to be your disciple. And in 33 and a half years, I haven't for one second had cause, or uh, what to speak of cause, ever wanted, had the least thought of backing off from that decision. Why? Because I want the truth. That's what I was really looking for. And when I found somebody who had it and could share it, then that's all I wanted. And since then, there have been people who have tried to persuade me that either he wasn't a master or that there are other greater masters. Indra Devi was saying that I should follow Satya Sai Baba because, after all, he's the greatest of all. And uh, uh, my answer to that is not to bother with making comparisons. I, it doesn't even matter to me whether Master is a completely realized master, although I'm convinced he is and was. But what matters to me is that he has what I want and that I've given my life to him and that there is a commitment there that cannot be broken or even shaken. And that kind of commitment is something that, that comes from the soul. It doesn't come from an intellectual decision. But if it were to be proved to me that there was somebody else who's greater, I'm sure there are better women than my own mother, but she's my mother. And so why should I go running after them? I can honor all women as mothers, but there is something special that Divine Mother gave me in the form of one woman as my mother. The same thing is true with the whole idea of discipleship. 
that our openness is not to a man, it's to an instrument. God has sent Master to us. God has given us a particular way, and we know it's godly. We know it by every possible test that we can apply. Then, if somebody were to come along and prove to us that Satya Sai Baba or some new Messiah to the age or Avatar or whatever has more of what God wants done in the age and some whatever reasons they could come up with, it no longer matters. This is the window God has brought, brought me to. As I said to somebody, even if your way is better, I could not be sincere following your way. Let me be sincere, at least, following my second best way, if that's all it is. Then he had to shut up. There was nothing more he could do to convert me. But the thing is that we've got to have that kind of, of loyalty and dedication that are possible to give never to a person because people can let you down. You can give loyalty to a person, unconditional and eternal loyalty to a person, but if that person goes against the truth, if that person is going to harm your attunement or try to pull you away from the path or whatever, I'm thinking, for example, of old friends before you came on the path. You, they are your friends, and you owe them that loyalty. And it's a loyalty that you should never uh, withdraw. But that doesn't mean you have to hobnob with them. You can say, wait till I gain, just as you don't, you don't uh, feel that you're running away from the world if you go to college and get a degree. It helps you to come back to the world with greater ability to, to handle your job and uh, your position in society. So it is that with old friends, let us say, we, could, we should leave them if they're not on the path but not, leave, not take our hearts away, which is to say that someday we hope we will reach the point where we can bless them. Or even now we can bless them, but someday we hope we can reach the point where we can, where we can repay this debt of friendship that we owe them. But that spirit of loyalty is very crucial, and crucial to the whole subject of the guru discipleship, and crucial in the point that it's essential to understand that the loyalty is not to a person except in a human way. Welcome again, friends. This is such an important topic of how to draw the Guru's presence, how to be in tune with the Guru, and it's a large topic. We can't go into it in the next few minutes that deeply. But I'd like to touch on a couple of points, a couple of parts of this, on how to draw the guru into our meditation, how to draw the guru into our day, and how to draw the guru after our day uh, in gratitude for his love and protection for uh, all that he's given us in that day. I think many people, when they uh, meditate, they're maybe they do a prayer at the beginning maybe they bow uh, maybe they chant maybe they read something but i think for the most part for many people after that short moment the mind starts racing and it starts thinking about all kinds of things in the day and planning the day and what happened yesterday and what difficult relationships there were and are and the mind goes on and on. And I think many people in the meditation, they're not really going deep because of that. And I I think that that's the reason. The reason behind that is our mind isn't focused and concentrated on master, on the gurus, on divine mother. But specifically today, I wanted to talk about focusing on the guru in meditation. There is a very um, kind of humorous story that Swamiji would enjoy telling uh, about a, a young fellow who was in an ashram and he was being trained by his guru to concentrate and to meditate. And so one day the guru saw the boy and the boy's mind was flailing and the guru said, well, you're not with me today. What's happened? And the boy said, oh, 
I am sorry, master, but my, my parents, they got me a pet buffalo. So I can't, I'm not really here today as much as I would like, but I'll stop thinking about the buffalo. Don't worry, I'll stop. And the guru said, no, no, no. If, if you can't, if you're thinking about the buffalo, you concentrate, just concentrate on the buffalo. It's okay. Just we'll do the other things later. And so the boy said, okay. So the guru said, okay, I'll, I'll come back later. You just sit and you sit in this room. I'll close the door and you concentrate on the buffalo. So about 12 hours went by. I just heard this story again by Swamiji. It's just so fun. 12 hours went by and the guru comes back and the boy's sitting there and he said, well, what are you doing now? He says, oh, I'm thinking about the buffalo. And the guru says, and the boy says, can I come out now? He says, no, stay there. I'll come back. Just keep thinking about the buffalo. So then uh, some more time, about 24 hours passed and the guru just let him think on the buffalo. And he he went back in and he said, now, uh, what's happening now? He says, oh, I'm playing. We're in the field and we're having a wonderful time. Can I come up? No, nope. stay, stay there and play with your buffalo. And so then a lot more time passed and the guru comes back and he says, well, what's happening now? Are you, what's happening with the, uh, are you fine? Are you playing? What's happening with the buffalo? He says, he says, what do you mean? I am the buffalo. And the guru says, uh, well, okay, well, come on out now. I can't come out. My horns are too big. And he had become, he had embraced that thought. And it's a fun story, but also it's a great story because he had become from thinking, from concentrating on that buffalo, he had become like the buffalo. So the guru, the guy couldn't even come out of the room. So the guru went in and he touched him. And the fellow was so deep in his concentration that he was, he went into a very deep state and he was able to transfer that into deep meditation. Now, this is the point for all of us. If we can concentrate deeply in our meditation and use our focus on just take your time as you meditate in the mornings and really, really try to draw master's presence D during the entire meditation not just for one minute in the prayer try to draw what he is try to draw his consciousness as you meditate try, try to draw the light that he sees draw the om from him draw his vibrations draw his joy and bliss and just as you sit there and i've been doing this a lot and it's just so wonderful I mean, master told the devotees, don't meditate alone. And one disciple said, well, master, I'm not here in the ashram. What if I'm by myself? He said, am I not always with you? So really draw, not just passively, but draw master's qualities, his consciousness, his everything that he was, draw it into you. He said to some disciples once, Guruji said, they were helping him. He said, you're drawing a lot of magnetism from me. I should be drawing his magnetism, his energy. One day when I wasn't feeling so well, I said, Master, I'm drawing your strength, your health into my body. And we probably know the story of Swamiji when he'd be meditating on Master, he'd be in the same room. Master would be talking about other worldly things like uh, filling potholes, uh, duties, responsibilities of the devotees. Swamiji said he would be sitting there. He wasn't involved in that in the back of the room. And he said it was as if his forehead just opened up and he soared out into infinity. And that problems he had would go, that had been there for years. Sitting in master's presence would just dissolve. Just anything that's going on in your worries or fears or difficulties, just feel they are just dissolving as you meditate on the power, the Shakti that's flowing from the guru. Start doing it more even today. And then at the end of your meditation, draw his thoughts. Master, what should I do today? This is a difficult situation at work or in my relationships. Please give me your ideas. Give me your thoughts. Give me inspiration. This is what I'm thinking to do. Is this the right way to go? 
And as Guruji said, look from here, put your thought, your prayer out from the spiritual eye, then feel this presence in your heart, feel this is the way, know that you may need to weigh two or, diff two or three different alternatives and options, but feel this is what my guru wants me to do, it's not what I want to do. And you might write them down. And I know inspiration for classes, for satsangs, for different things I need to do, they just come out of meditation. At the end of meditation, mind is clear, mind is uplifted, Guruji's with you. Just let him just pour into you inspiration, thoughts. And I was in many meetings with Swamiji where he would throw out a question, what do people think about this? And I don't know, wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't a good answer. Or gee, I haven't thought about that. He would want you to be uplifted and in tune. Think about it, figure it out. And people go to other people to try to get their answers. At the end of your meditation, get the answer from master. Really try to master, I want to know. Please help me to go in the right direction. Then go take the first step, what you think is right, then the next step, then the next step, and the next step, and feel that he's with you. And during your day, first we did in meditation, at the end of meditation. Now, during your day, feel he's walking with you. He's talking through you. He's working through you. His energy is with you. And know that his, his energy and his protection and his consciousness, his magnetism are all there with you. And I was just rereading a couple of beautiful stories. One was of a man who, a disciple, uh, Norman, who was in a flatbed truck going down Mount Washington, where the uh, center ashram was. And it was a very steep hill. I've been there several times. And he said it was on a truck and he was going down and believe it or not, the brakes failed. And he was pumping, pumping, pumping the brakes. Nothing happened. And he was going faster and faster. He couldn't stop the truck. And then he said, Master, is this what you want? And he said, immediately, the truck started slowing, slowing, slowing down and came to a complete stop. Now, that's saying something. Master, is this what you want? And feel that he's guiding you. He's telling you. He's helping you. He's protecting you. There was a, another beautiful story of a man, another disciple at uh, it was a Lake Shrine. He was trying to get a pump going at the Murti statue of Jesus, and he could, just couldn't get it going. Finally, he sat down and he prayed to Babaji to help him. And the pump, he went back, he knew what to do, the pump started working. And Master said, I told Babaji to give you that experience. And good, he's, he's there. Really know that he's there. And his thoughts, his vibrations, his energy, they're all with you. And then finally, uh, at the end of your day, come back in deep gratitude and just feel how Master's blessed you. He's helped you. And in gratitude, feel that he's, he's coming into you not coming, but he came into you and he's continuously being with you and inside of you. There was a, a, an example of this, and I'll close with this, of a woman who, um, she was wondering about master's presence and if he was there with her and all. And one day she looked in the mirror and she saw master's face there looking at her in the mirror. So just know that his presence is there. And I'll close with these words on uh, meditation with master, with the guru from Swamiji. Bring the guru into your presence, bring his grace and feel him sitting right beside you in meditation. Feel that your own body is his body. Feel as if he were merged in you. This is what happens when the guru enters you and fills you with divine blessings. He actually merges his astral body with yours and fills you with his magnetism. Om Shanti Shanti. And I'll ask Natendra to come on the screen now. And we have a few questions for today. If you have other questions, you can put them in the chat group, in the chat. 
Thank you, Dhyanaji. I'll just share the questions. Maybe the first one is, how can I receive guidance from master? Does he really hear me and will he respond? Yeah, that's a, I think many people wonder about that, but master told Swamiji, I know every thought you think. He proved it so many times with the disciples. Uh, I mean, there are many stories. There's the hamburger story, which many of you know, the guru who stopped, I mean, the disciples stopped on the side of the road when the guru had told him not to eat meat. Master, the next day called him and said, by the way, when you're on the road late at night and there's nothing but hamburgers to eat, better not to eat. And there, there are many beautiful stories like that. One disciple had left a gift for master at his door. I think it was Christmas time. And master, uh, the, the disciple ran off. And, but master knew who it was. He called him, thank you for your gift. And so he, he knows the thoughts of the disciples, if he's in his body or if he's not. But I think it's more about our own consciousness, our own efforts, our own awareness, our own not being passive, but really putting it to Guruji. There was that one man, remember, he was there with Master for 12 years as a disciple. And Master said he left and he didn't come back and different ones were coming and going. And the disciple said, well, what about this man? Will he come back or when will he come back? Master said he'll never come back. He was never in. And he was there. He was, a, I think he was even helping with teaching. I'm not sure of that point, but I believe so. And so it's up to us. We can't say, where's the guru? Where's the guru? Where are you? is the question. So call to master, Om Guru, keep him in your mind, uh, keep pictures around, listen to his voice on the recordings, read his words, do his practices, and you'll magnetize him to come and be with you. I remember one time we were, th we were with uh, Kamala Silva, master's uh, woman disciple, one of his women disciples, and we were chanting. She was living at Ananda village for, I don't know, some, at least a year, maybe it was a couple of years. And we were chanting, I think it was door of my heart with her. And uh, she said, master, that would draw master's presence. So do things that would draw his presence. Don't just sit passively hoping he's going to be around to those who think me near, I'll be near. Thank you, Dhanaji. We have a live question, which is, if I surrender completely to master, then that will facilitate better calmness and peace. And that also will help me deeper, going deep in my meditation. Is that how the cycle also works? No. 25% is our efforts. Let's remember that. 25%, the guru gives us he said lots of his good karma so we can get through 50% is God's grace. And so we can't completely, I mean, surrender, I would say self-offering. Now, what does the self mean? The ego, what I want, what I want to do, my thoughts, this is my idea, uh, my job, my everything. So there has to be a collaboration that the disciple can't sit back passively on the couch and hope that the guru is going to do everything for them. So the greater the will, the greater the flow of energy, greater the magnetism, greater the inspiration. So our part is important as well. So uh, surrender is, uh, it's a good word and it's not a good word because <laughs> we think surrender means, okay, I won't do anything, but our path is all about energy, isn't it? Willpower, uh, making it happen, getting up and getting going. If you're in the bed in the morning, I surrender to the guru. I won't get up. He'll help me. He's not going to do anything. You get yourself out of the bed. And so um, I found that times when I had the most energy and the most joy was when I said, I will reason. I will will. I will act but guide my reason, will, and activity to the right path and every action. So you have a big part to play. 
And I see people who are soaring, the ones who are serving a lot, they're there, they're positive, the attitudes are right. Uh, and people who aren't just aren't, they're not at that level. So think about it. The guru helps those, you know, the saying, God helps those who help themselves. Same with guru. Guru helps those who help themselves. Thanks for the clarification, Janice. The next one is, are there others like psychics or astrologers who can guide me as well as master? No. <laughs> That's the bottom line. The guru is God. How can a psychic tell you better than God? Isn't it? How can an astrologer tell you better than God? And the guru is above the psychics and the astrologers. Remember, Master, that man, uh, the astrologer, who told him, well, you will marry three times, and you and Master said, no way. And he took that astrological chart, he tore it up, he put it in a bag and he lit it and put it on fire. And he knew that God was above anybody else. And so, uh, I mean, it's helpful at times. I've had naughty readings. Swamiji had one where the man it seemed pretty good, but the man told him he'd live about four, four more years longer than he did. Master took him. So it's helpful, but don't lean on it. And I see people here leaning on that. Oh, I can't go outside because today my astro astrological reading told me, don't go outside. <laughs> you see this with people and, and just be, use your common sense. And if you do, you'll find that you ask master is better. And then if you end up going to somebody, go to somebody good. We, in Ananda, we have a very good, astrologer Drapada. He goes by Swami Sri Yukteswarji's um, way, his, his book and all. And there's a couple of other ones, Keshava and not the Keshava here in India, but in America. And there's some that they're devotees, they're Kriyabans, they're deep disciples, but just go to somebody off the street. And as somebody who's not deep or long on the path, I would be very careful. I remember someone, well, I told the story already, but I won't I'll tell it again, but a so-called psychic told me something that was completely wrong. You're going to leave India. You won't be here. You're going to do this. And it took me, I mean, it took me a while to come out of that. And that was why I'm a strong devotee. And that was while I was here in India. So be careful with those kind of things. Thank you, Guruji. Um, we may take a few more minutes. We have two more questions. Okay. The first one is, does the guru know my thoughts and needs already? And yes. Does he help me even if I don't ask for help? I think you got to put some energy out. Isn't it so? I mean, if you just sit there, he knows all my thoughts. <laughs> it just doesn't add up. Does it add up? How can any, you know, you need help. And as you need help, you call out. And when you call out, it's like you're... You're open, you're receptive, you're putting your will into it, you're putting your part in, as I said earlier. So do your part, don't be lazy. And uh, I don't see how lazy people, they're just not making it. They're just not. Laziness, a lazy person just can't find God. I hate to say these things, but it's the truth. So be enthusiastic. If someone says, oh, we need help doing this. Okay, I'll help. Not, is there somebody else? <laughs> you know? Just do it. And you'll feel so much better and joyful. Thank you, Energy. The final question is, can I do the purification ceremony at my own home? That's a wonderful practice. And we've done it at the center just recently with a few people there. I would say uh, you can do a type of purification. It won't be the one like Swamiji wrote, but why not? If something's bothering you, write it down on some paper or mentally you can do it. You can light it on a flame, put it in some you know bowl or urn and uh, go up to your altar and just say, I seek purification by the grace of God. Master, bless me. And how can he not bless you? And when you can do it in person with one of the acharyas, 
do it that way. Or you can mentally, at the end of your meditation, feel, say those words and feel you're giving something. Don't carry around heavy baggage all the time. Feel you're giving it to master. And the last part is after you give it, leave it. People give it and then they take it back. Why do you take it back? He took it. The master says, open your heart to me and I will enter and take charge of your life. So do it, but leave it. Leave it to the guru. Let him work with you. And then you will find his power will change you and it will change you in very deep ways. God bless you all.